Hello, let's look at the guitar neck. What I want to look at is root six position chords. What is a root six position chord? It's a chord that has its root note on the sixth string. If we're going to look at major chords, then you want to draw the analogy between the major root six scale You see, that was the root six scale where we're starting on our second finger and we're in this position. So most of the notes are higher on the fretboard, as in further this way, we're higher on the fretboard than the root note is. So if the root note's on the fifth fret, most of the notes in the chord are gonna be higher than the fifth fret. That's the position we're in. Now the first chord we're going to look at is going to be the A major bar chord with the root note being A on the 5th fret of the 6th string. Now if you look at the A major scale, you'll see that it has a root, a 5th, a root, a 3rd, a 5th, and a root. If we're going to look at the A minor bar chord, there's only one third note in it. So there's only, there's only one note that has to change to change it from major to minor, and that is the third. The major third comes down one fret, one semitone, to make it into a minor chord. So that just means that your second finger, instead of being on the third string, comes off, and then the bar catches the minor third note. So this is the A minor bar chord. And you can connect that with your A minor scale. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, one. So this chord has the flat three from the A minor scale. One flat three five is what it has in the chord. Now the next chord that we're gonna look at is the dominant seventh chord. So if you take the major bar chord and then you take your little finger off so that the bar catches the note that's on the fourth string, then the root note from the major chord becomes the flat seventh. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven. That would be the seven. That's the flat seven. And we know that a dominant seventh chord is like a major chord but with also a flat seven added to it. So it's like a major triad with a flat seven as well. And then you can also, if you want, you can put a seventh up here on the second string and play the seventh again. So you've got one, five, flat seven, three, flat seven, one. Or you can play five, one, three, flat seven, like that. But what we're looking at with that one is like the uh, major scale with a flat seven. That's called a mixolydian mode. So that's the A dominant seventh chord. If you want to look at the A minor seventh chord, Let's go back to the A minor chord. 
Remember it's a bar with your third and fourth fingers here. No second finger. And how would we change it to put in the flat seventh? Well, just like with the dominant seventh chord, you take your little finger off. And there you have it. A minor seventh chord. Oftentimes, the minor seventh chord in the root six position is played like this. With nothing on the fifth string. So the fifth string's muted. And then oftentimes you won't even play the first string either. So it will just be root, flat seven, flat third, fifth. You can also play it like this. Root, fifth, root, flat third, flat seven, root. Now, with the minor chord and the minor seventh chord, you can relate those chords to the minor scale, which looks like this. So any note in the chord that you want to play, you can find it by thinking about the minor scale in this position. So I might think, uh, let's put a minor third up the top, a flat seventh, then the minor third again, and then the root. So you got flat three, flat seven, flat three again, and then root. You know, so you can play that. Or you might want to go root five, flat seven, flat three, you know. So you can find it if you if you can see where the scale is. Now there's another kind of chord that we can look at and that is the major seventh chord. Now, because it's a major type of chord, we wanna look at the major scale. Now, when we were doing the major bar chord, this note here, this, this root that we've got in the middle of the chord, that was how we brought it down to the, the flat seventh in the dominant seventh chord, wasn't it? But if you want to move it down to the major seventh, then you want to move it down just one fret. And then how do you put that together as a chord? You'd have to use your second finger, your third finger, your fourth finger for the fifth of the chord. You could do that. But if I'm honest, that's not something that I see or that I do a lot of. I mean it sounds nice but often I just see this root nothing on the fifth string muted fifth major seventh major third fifth or alternately you can do it in stacked thirds now stacked thirds is where you have your root note and you have a third above that, and then another third above that, and then another third above that. So you've got major third, and then stack a minor third on top of that to get to your fifth, and then a major third on top of that to get to your major seventh. Again, it's not something that I use a lot, but it has a particular sound, which is cool. If you wanted to take one of those basic chord styles and you wanted to add extra notes to it, so say you wanted to add extensions to it, an extension is a ninth, an eleventh, or a thirteenth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where's the nine, eleven, thirteen? You may wonder. Well, a ninth is the same as a second, an eleventh is the same as a fourth, and a thirteenth is the same as a sixth. Let me explain it to you. If you were to start down here and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and keep counting through nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. You see, when you count up continuing onwards into the next octave, then you get these ninths. 11th and 13th. Now, why don't we just call it a second or a fourth or a sixth? 
The reason why we don't do that is because it has a sort of a different character when you add it above the seventh note in a chord. So any chord that has a seventh in it, so dominant seventh, minor seventh, major seventh, even a half diminished chord, any note that has a seventh in it, if you then add a second or a fourth or a sixth, that will be called a ninth, an eleventh, or a thirteenth. Doesn't matter if the second, fourth, or sixth is below or above the seventh in the chord. If there's a seventh in it, that sort of indicates you're looking up through into the next notes above the seventh, if you know what I mean. You've got a major seventh. One, seven, three. Say we wanted to change the fifth. By the way, the fifth can be omitted from major sevenths, minor sevenths, and dominant sevenths if you want. Say we took the fifth note, and instead of making it the fifth, we put it up two frets to where the sixth is in the major scale. Well, because we've got a seventh in it, that sixth is actually a thirteenth in this chord. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that chord is called A major 13. What if we took the A dominant 7th chord? And we did the same thing. We played that note there, the 6th. Because it has a flat 7th in it, that's a type of 7th. So if you add the 6th... Now that is a 13th. That's called the A13 chord. Or you could call it A dominant 13 chord. The 13th is usually used with dominant or major type chords. It's not so much in minor. All right, let's look at the minor chord. So that's minor, minor 7. What if we took this fifth here? drop it down to the fourth. That is an A minor 11th chord. Or one, flat seven, flat three, four. But because it has a minor seventh in it, it is an 11th chord. Four is an 11 when there's a seven. Now, ninth chords. A ninth is the same as the two. Say we've got a A dominant seventh chord. That's the root, that's the two. So we play that on top of a dominant seventh chord. That is a dominant ninth chord. Or you can just call that a ninth chord. You can do it with a major seventh chord. That is a major ninth chord. You can do it with a minor seventh chord. Or you can do this. One, flat three, flat seven, two. But because there's a flat seven in it, because there's a seventh in it, the two becomes a nine. We've been through a lot of stuff here, but the thing that I want you to remember is that if you know the scale degrees, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. If you know the scale degrees on the guitar neck in a given position, then you can create whatever chord you want in that position using the notes that you find from your scale. I might do this sort of thing with some different positions, like for example, the root five position. Or maybe the root six position with the pinky on the root. I'll see you next time.